the war between Inamdi Kanu and Uwanzurike is no longer something that we might want to wave off, as I've always preached and talked about unity, particularly when you are fighting against a common enemy. According to Wanzurike, in response to Mazen Namde Kanu, he spoke on Radio Biafra and he talked about Wanzurike and Masob. Wanzurike had said that Masob is the mother of all the other secessionist group, including IPOB. He went on to talk about how Namde Kanu also was invited and was part of the group until he decided to create his own group and he started with Radio Biafra and some other you know, activities that led to what IPOB is today. For me, personally, I would say every messenger has his own message, but right now, the message of Namde Kanu is louder than before louder than any other group every one of these freedom fighters have one way or the other sacrificed their life for this cause so we are not going to rule them out and say oh we will be foolish it will be mediocrity it will be myopic for us to just look at uanzerike and say he has not sacrificed either he joined the group as a, a true freedom fighter and eventually he realized that there are a lot involved in this and human probably human weakness or probably he was never really into it i don't know i am not um in i'm not the right person to decide on this but what i know is that Unazurike is still doing what he thinks he could or he can and now the kind of pointed at some activities of Unazurike said was it not when you were the head of Masob Ukraine? That's when you built your mansion. You got money from that movement and all of that. And there are some people that have also pointed fingers. Um, the ex-partner or girlfriend of Nam the Kanu back then when they created the group, he said Nam the Kanu was the one in charge of everything, the money and all of that. Some say she's just a you know a crazy, you know, disgruntled girlfriend that has been dropped because of her manners and stuff like that. And she has to look up and invent stories here and there. But whatever it is. The, the 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 focus should be on the movement so that we don't lose track and impute things that are not important inconsequential things that are not meaningful into this the fight is biafra and like i said the common enemy is what should be focused on but then i'm still going to share what wanzurike said wanzurike said as um, in, in response to IPOB in response to Mazen Namde Kanu. This fractidal war of words between leader of the two foremost Biafra agitation groups, as, as of now, Mazen Namde Kanu of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and Chief Raf Wanzurike, founder of uh, the movement for the astralization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Masob, which was rekindled earlier in the week. This has gotten even messier, and I've always asked and called for cooperation between them. Let them look into each other and look in words. It's important that you look in words and be able to come up with something more progressive. You cannot do this. You cannot. I'm even beginning to wonder how the Biafra nation is going to be with this. Biafra is not here yet. This is what is happening. What if Biafra comes in? I'm telling you, Enugu will say we want to stay by ourselves with these people. This one will say they want to stay. Ethnic issues. They need to deal with ethnic issues at, um, right now and of course vested interest and like i do say be a revolutionary that reflect don't be an activist activists just act they say let's go they say okay we are all raising banners yes they should give it to us have you taken time to reflect so you don't end up becoming a tyrant can you berate anyone's ricky for allegedly taking the issue of biafra to the unrepresented nations and people's organization unpo unpo is simply in a, an organization who that setting well let's use examples of the yorubas the igbos and some other groups biafra can go into register because they are not registered with the uh, mother body of it as the united nations so if you are not registered probably because your country is not sovereign yet 
you can register with UNPO. The Yorubas have done this, and with this, they claim that they can raise their flag, the Yoruba flag. I believe this is a step towards the break if politics and greed does not come into it. The UNPO is located in Hague, Netherlands. A move, he said, was belittling as several Igbo groups are taking Biafra matter to the United Nations, which was far much more a recognized body. Now, Nabi Kanu believed and claimed that he took that to the United Nations and for Nwazurike to take it to UNPO, um, he believes that that is beneath that um, he has done what needs to be done. Now, this is moreover like a struggle between two men. One of them showing the other person that I can do more than you can do. I have um, done this. I don't care who wants to do better. The most important thing is that result is gotten. If certain groups of people want to impress themselves, that's okay. Impress and make sure. But where the problem comes in is if two of them are now, one way or the other, um, they, are, they, they are not progressing. Rather, they are now kind of um, eating each other from behind the back. Then that's a problem. The IPOB leader statement drew the anger of Mwanzirike, who threw the National Director of Information of Masop, Sonny Okora, Okorafo, took a swipe at Kanu, describing him as a man not qualified to speak about the Biafran struggle or attack on Mwanzirike. In his words, he said, where was the name Kanu when Chief Raf Mwanzirike started the struggle for Biafra? He was there in the United Kingdom. One thing is clear, Uwanzurike was the first man in this new struggle to hoist Biafra flag in the international arena. Masop, founded by Uwanzurike, to which Inamdekanu was a member, set out stages for the struggle. And that is what the Masop founder is following religiously. Continuing, Uwanzurike said, if the IPO leader Inamdekanu is talking about struggle for Biafra, he should first of all come back home and not stay abroad, not stay outside of Biafra land to make noise on radio, on the internet. We are here fighting, pushing for the struggle. So we are not the cowards. Let him come back here, not to stay outside. He should not be afraid of imprisonment after all. Nelson Mandela was in prison in South Africa for 27 years. He did not run away or abandon his people. Now the canoe should come down home. Fight for the freedom of your people at home. Do not run away. The Masop Director of Information said it was the height of irresponsibility for anybody to accuse Wazurike of giving bribe to allow Biafra membership of UNPO, which is what Mazen the canoe said. He said he gave them $2,000 to get that. And, um, you know, I do not know about that anyway. So, if Kanu thinks we should be at logger ends with our neighbors because we are fighting for Biafra, he should be joking. Masob has come a long way with the Biafra struggle and we will not allow anybody to distract us. Kanu, however, is not allowing Wazirike Town. Speaking through his Group Publicity Secretary, my powerful, the IPO leader described Uwanzurike as a jester, court jester. He said, we don't normally respond to what Chief Ralph Uwanzurike and group says because they are inconsequential. Uwanzurike, I must tell you, does not know what freedom fighting is all about. If not, he should not, he should have known that in freedom fighting, it's either you are in prison or in exile, or you are dead. You have to pick one out of it. Either you're in prison, exile, or dead. So right now, Nabi Kanu is out there on exile. Those are the three things that happen to a freedom fighter. Either he is in prison, talking about freedom, in exile, still talking about freedom, or they kill you. Going further, Powerful said, once the case should be told in clear terms, that Moses ran away when the Egyptians were after his life. And at the end, he led the people of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land. Our leader, Imam the Kanu, being outside the country does not mean he is a coward. He is there preparing the coming of the new nation. And the new nation is about to come. And Uwazurike is there playing to the gallery that he is registering our Biafra in UNPO. Is making a jest of himself. So I want us to look into this. Do you think what 
Ralph Wanzerike is doing now. You know, let, let's say what he has done before and all of that might not necessarily, you know, mean much what he had done before. I mean, not when he was incarcerated and all of that. Probably what he is doing now. Do you think it's a move towards progress? These are the questions that I want you guys to look into. Do you think it's working? Do you think it's working to put Biafra on the next level? Or do you think Nandekanu is even doing much more? Let us know in the comment section below.